Today we're going to be showing you how to drop the mast on a flying Scot single-handed. First thing you want to do is obtain a leader line that will allow you to bridge the gap between the jib halyard shackle and the bow eye as the jib halyard is not long enough to stay on the bow eye and let the mast come all the way down. Once you've tied a knot in one end of your leader line, you want to go ahead and attach the jib halyard shackle to it. Then you find the other end of the line and attach that to the bow eye. The key is to find a piece of line that is long enough that will allow the mast to come all the way down without having to untie any knots, but short enough that you can tighten the jib halyard and not have the halyard shackle hit the shiv on the mast before you can pull it taut, as this will be our temporary force day. We get our lines good and tight. Make sure everything is secure. And then we go ahead and head to the cockpit to drop the mast. The boom is already down in this boat. We go ahead and just take it down and lay it on the floor, push it up under the seat to stay out of the way of your feet. The boom crutch is also out of the way to completely clear the decks. We then start tightening our jib halyard. As you can see, it's going up there. Our leader line will get nice and taut. Once we have it tight enough that there's enough slack in the foresay to take the pin out, we go ahead and lock it off. You want to make sure that the pawl is securely in place and that there's no way that jib halyard is going to move before you head forward. Go ahead and undo the forestay, making sure to put the pin back in the position where you found it so that in the spring when you get the boat out, you don't have to guess as to where your rig was. Now, if you had somebody assisting you, they could be at the bow doing this and the jib halyard shackle could be on the bow eye itself. Once we're good, we go ahead into the boat. We make sure that all our surroundings are clear for a takedown. There's no people, trees, or power lines or anything else in our way. The rear mast fork is in place at the rudder gudgeons. Once we're sure that we are okay to go ahead, we loosen the jib halyard. Just let that pawl drop and the halyard goes slack. If somebody was helping you, at this point, they would just unshackle the jib halyard from the bow eye if that's where you had it located and the mass begins to come back. We just walk it back, hand over hand, nice and steady. Again, we can see that that jib hired is just nice and slack as it comes down, not being taut or pulling on anything. The mass continues to pivot down and then just lays right into the mast fork. We then come forward and we go ahead and slide the butt of the mast off of the hinge pin so that we can center the boat or the mast on the boat. We've got that front mast fork ready, but we do not put that in until we get the mast forward and further in place. You can just slide the mast through the rear mast fork until you get to the shroud tangs, and then you're going to have to give it a little lift. The front mast fork goes in place. It's very important to never put this in place until after the mast has come down. If you put it in place and then try to drop the mast, you will actually split the butt of the mast open. So you want to make sure that that front mast fork does not go in until the mast is down and you're just trying to center it on the boat for trailering. This is the part in time where you would take off your masthead fly if you had one on and stow it. You would also go ahead and just start bringing all of your lines and stays into the cockpit of the boat. We leave everything just kind of nice and loose. We leave our spinnaker halyard uh, tied to the ring uh, at where the shroud meets the chain plate. We just make sure that it is not cleated so that it can't provide any resistance. The forestay just lays in the boat and the jib halyard will be attached either to the ring on the mast or to that top spacer on your halyard winch box. The top spacer keeps the jib halyard below the mast and therefore it doesn't chafe as you go down the road. The key to that is just to make sure that when you tighten it to take any of the slop out that you just tighten it slightly. You do not want to over tighten if you attach it to that spacer as it could pull that spacer out. So again, either the spacer or the ring on the mast, it doesn't matter. You just want to go ahead and secure that jib halyard shackle and tighten it so that it's not flopping around in the boat. The four stay, the side stays, they all stay loose and slack in the boat. The spinnaker halyard, same thing. We pull the mast forward until that tang bolt is even with the aft combing. That is our preferred position. It leaves a minimal amount of mast sticking out the back. Of course, you can put it wherever you find it comfortable for trailering. We like to leave our side stays hooked up 
So we go ahead and just lay them across the jib car track on the car itself, pinned between the pin and the spring. We then pull it forward and hook it over those wooden cleats or perhaps you have plastic cleats on the side of your stanchion and then use the tail end of any line, your topping lift, your, your spinnaker halyard, it doesn't really matter to secure those in place. You can also add a step by taking your jib sheets and tying them off around that block on the car, pulling them tight and cleating them, and they will then that block will lay over the side stay and pin it in place so that it cannot chafe. From there, we just do some basic storage items. Make sure that if our rudder and tiller are riding in the boat, that they are, in fact, in something and secure. Make sure that nothing else is left around, that the boat is tied down, that the mast is tied down fore and aft. Throw the covers on, and you are ready to head down the road.